Like me, are you sometimes overwhelmed by the amount of advice and sometimes confusing advice there is on YouTube? Well, stay tuned because today I'd like to share with you my go-to people on YouTube for all things piano. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place, as you know, for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas about how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first trip, then please do subscribe. All you need to do is click on that little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, and it's done for you. Search engines such as Google and of course YouTube, which is the world's second largest search engine, are amazing things. You type in a few words and you will quite literally get millions of results that relate to the words you've just typed in. And whilst this is great, it also has a slight disadvantage, if I dare say that, of the fact that you will often find contradictory, confusing advice in all of the things that are there, and it can become difficult to work out what to listen to and what to ignore. Today, I'd like to share with you the resources that I've found on YouTube and that I've personally found the most interesting. And at the end, I'll share with you some bonus tips, so stay tuned, of how you can actually get more from YouTube using some of its features. One of my first piano discoveries on YouTube was Josh Wright Piano TV. Josh, now Dr. Josh Wright, started releasing videos some nine years ago whilst he was still a student and has continued ever since, and there are now over 400 videos on his channel. Josh covers pretty much every piano topic that you could ever think of, and his videos are really great to watch. I think I've probably watched all of his videos, more or less, over the past three or so years. And one of the things that I really appreciate about them is that he is clearly an excellent teacher. Even in his very earlier videos where he was a much younger man, he's got a very good way of explaining things, and that has just got better and better with the videos that he's released over the years. Secondly, I think it's worth pointing out the generosity of Josh as well in the, what he's done with this channel. I mean, clearly from the names of the people that he's had lessons with, he has invested a lot of time and, I guess, an awful lot of money into his piano education. And therefore, to share a lot of this knowledge and experience that he's gained freely over the internet with, you know, a bunch of strangers is a very generous thing to do. Now, of course, I think Josh has got a couple of paid subscription services that we'll talk about in a second, but even just the free content that he has really is quite amazing just in the breadth of stuff that he covers. And the third thing I like about Josh is that he's also clearly a very accomplished pianist. Now, I noticed that he was actually in the Chopin competition a couple of years ago, and even to get to compete at something like that, you really do have to be at the very top of your game. It's not for everybody. Certainly, I don't think it's something I would ever be allowed to do. So, you know, they say that those who can do and those who can't teach, well, here's a case that proves that wrong in that Josh can clearly do both and do both very, very well. As I briefly mentioned, he's extended his online presence with a couple of paid services, you know, apart from private piano lessons, which of course he does, but he has a couple of paid services on his website. One of them is called his Pro Practice Series and another is called his VIP Masterclass Series. And these are both things that I'm actually very interested in subscribing to myself. I haven't done it just yet because when I do subscribe, I want to know that I'll be able to dedicate enough time to actually benefit him properly and seriously from the videos that he has in these series. Another great YouTube teacher is Paul Barton. So Paul's first video on YouTube appeared some 10 years ago and he's been a prolific uploader since then. 
unlike Josh Wright, who tends to focus more on aspects of piano technique and then demonstrate this using different pieces, what you'll find on Paul's channel more often than not is that he will do an in-depth tutorial on a specific piece of music. So if you're looking at learning, say, a Chopin etude, just go to YouTube, type in the name of the etude, stick Paul Barton tutorial on the end of it, and the chances are that it will actually turn up a result. A lot of Paul's videos are filmed in an overhead keyboard view, which is extremely useful when you're trying to watch carefully what he's doing with his fingers, so you can work out fingering suggestions for yourself. He very kindly takes time to play through things extremely slowly, especially complicated things that again are very useful when you're watching back to try and get a feel and an understanding for what's going on in the music. I've always found his tutorial videos very useful and for example I referenced his tutorial on this cadenza in the video I did on how I approached learning that second cadenza in Liszt Liebestraum. In addition to all of his video tutorials, Paul is also a very regular uploader of recordings of his own playing. How he manages to learn so many things and upload them so quickly is beyond me. It's very, very impressive. I think his recordings are very well made, they're very well recorded, and they're great both for the entertainment value of them and also for the educational value, because even the ones where he records his own playing, a lot of those use this familiar overhead keyboard view, which is very helpful when you're learning that piece. The next super source on YouTube is actually Pianist Magazine. Now, you might raise an eyebrow thinking, why is he talking about a magazine when he's supposed to be doing a video on YouTube channels? Well, that's simply because Pianist Magazine has a YouTube channel. Josh Wright and Paul Barton, I would say, are, you know, are more aimed at, I don't know, intermediate to advanced level pianists in the stuff that they do. I'm not saying they don't have beginner piano stuff, because they do, but they're more, uh, more advanced level than beginner. If you go to Pianist Magazine, then they actually categorize their video tutorials into three levels. They've got the beginner ones, they've got intermediate ones, and they've got advanced ones. So this really gives a little bit of something for everybody learning. The videos that are there are generally to accompany an article that was in the magazine. However, I found that you can watch them either in conjunction with the article or you can watch them as standalone content quite easily enough. And of course, don't forget, if there's something that you do find particularly interesting and that you really do want to get hold of the article itself, then you can download the back editions of Pianist Magazine using their digital app which is a great way to do it and a nice easy way to get the rest of the information that might not always be in the video. So far I've talked pretty much exclusively about classical piano because that's my major interest. However, before I sign off, I'd like to throw in a, an extra channel for you if you're interested, for example, in learning jazz piano. And that's a channel by a guy called Kent Hewitt. Kent uploaded his first jazz tutorial, jazz tips video to YouTube some three years ago, and since then he's uploaded a real good number of them. What I specifically like about the stuff that Kent's done is that he clearly has a very, very detailed grasp of the complex theory that's required to play jazz well. He also has a good way of explaining it. He takes you through a lot of the basic concepts such as reharmonization, improvisation, and voicing, you know, in the sense that jazz musicians use the word voicing. And then to go with his channel, he also has a website. So on his website for free, you can download transcriptions of various pieces that Kent's done with great reharmonizations and demonstrating a lot of the jazz piano techniques that he talks about in his videos. And these alone are a fantastic resource. And then, of course, don't forget that there's a book. So if you're really wanting to go through a more structured method and learn jazz, 
then I would imagine that this book would be great. I have to admit, I've not bought it yet. But as soon as I decide to launch myself into this, which is definitely on my to-do list, I'm definitely going to get a copy of Ken's book and I'm going to work through that to help teach myself jazz. I guess I consider myself to be, what, well, an intermediate level pianist. So the channels, of course, that I'll tend to gravitate towards are probably channels more aimed at that level of learner. However, I also like to remind myself of the basics of these things every now and then, and therefore I have also watched some very useful beginner level channels. A couple that I'd highly recommend you to look at if you're a beginner are Piano TV and Learn Piano with Jayza Lee. Both of these provide great beginner level videos with step-by-step -step guidance on some of the things that, you know, beginners find quite confusing at first. If you enjoy a more arty style of video, then I'd highly recommend you have a look at Nare Sol's channel. She does a great range of very well-filmed videos with also a lot of really good advice for pianists within them too. So now, as I promised at the beginning, here are some quick tips on how you can get the most from YouTube channels. One of the first things to look for when you discover a new channel is the playlists that they have. Now, playlists are basically just used by the channel owners to help them categorize their videos together and make it easier for viewers to find things that they're interested in on the channel, especially, you know, bigger channels like Josh with 400 plus videos there. If you're looking for a specific thing, it helps that it's been narrowed down a little bit first for you. Of course, don't forget that you can also change the playback speed. Now this is a good game changer when you're looking at piano related videos. We all know that pianists fingers move extremely quickly when they play and using this speed change function helps you to slow things down so that you can better see what's actually going on at the keyboard. And then finally to help you with YouTube videos, don't forget that you can turn on captions too. And these are quite often available in more than one language, which can make it much easier to follow a video if you're not used to the accent of the person who's presenting it. Which YouTube channels are you subscribed to and why do you like them? Let me know in the comments below because I'm always looking for new sources of piano-based inspiration. So it'll be good to know the things that you're finding useful. If you're not already, please do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, click the little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.